In this video, we're going to create a user journey that is focused on adding an item into a cart. A user journey or a user journey prototype is something that shows how a user interacts with an app or with a website in some particular way to solve a specific problem. In this case, that's going to be adding an item to a cart and we're going to be creating a simple prototype animated prototype for that in Figma. So let's get started. First, I'm going to select the frame tool to create a new frame. And this frame, I'm going to make sure to go to prototype and then select iPhone 11 Pro or X. I'm cl I click it and then I will rename this frame screen. So this is just for reference so that we know what's the target screen dimensions to know what scale should this be designed in. Um, at first, we're going to be actually designing the final product detail with the description and the button. So let's get started on that. So what we know for sure is that this item is going to have some kind of an item name, right? So I'm going to create a headline, set the size of this to about 28. And then it's definitely going to have some kind of a description. So I'm just going to write a few words to have something that will serve as a placeholder for a product description. I'm going to set the size of this to around 16 and make it demi bold or medium. And then what we also know is that there's going to be a definitely an add to cart button. So I'm going to create that. It's going to be about this size. There's going to be some letter spacing and I'm going to add an auto layout by pressing shift A, rename this button and then specify paddings and the background as well as the font color. And since our fictional user is going to be buying a camera, I downloaded a photo of a camera from pexels.com and that is going to be our product photo, which means that I'm going to crop it so that it's a square. Since it's 409 pixels wide, that's going to be the height as well. So 409 and I'm going to drag it over here. That's our product photo. This is the basic structure of the final page product detail page, let's say or the preview. We're going to have a product photo, we're going to have a product name and then a description and a button, a call to action to add this to your uh, cart. I'm going to select these three elements. That's the headline, description and button and add that into an auto layout. I'm going to name this auto layout uh, product details and add some padding. I'm going to also select these text objects and set their width to fill container so that it respects the width of the auto layout. I'm going to set the same for the button, but I need to specify that this is now going to be centered. Um, the text is going to be centered so that the text always stays in the middle like this. I'm going to also select the add to cart text object and then set the width to fill container. And also this means aligning this text as well. Not only the object within the auto layout, but the text as well. So this is what, this is the behavior we are, we currently set up, right? So we have three elements with 16 pixel spacing and a button. I want to move these a little bit closer together. So I'm gonna select both of these, shift A, press enter and set these to fill container. Then select the new frame, the new auto layout and set that to fill container as well. That way uh, we still get this behavior, but we also have the option to decrease the spacing only between these two items, which is exactly what we wanted. So that's the reason for that. Now I'm gonna take the product details and the photo and add that into an auto layout as well. This auto layout is gonna be called product and there's gonna be no spacing. The product details are going to have a white background. So this is kind of what you're getting right now. The image, I'm going to be wrapping that into a frame. So I'm going to select the image called image one and then press command option G to create a frame. This frame is going to be called image frame, uh, image frame. And we're going to select the image and then set the constraints to center and center. The reason for this is when we change the sizes of this frame, the image is going to stay in the middle. But at the same time, we want these overlapping areas not be visible, which means checking this checkbox, clip content, and you can see that it stays hidden when we change the sizes. Um, this frame is going to be fill container and going to have a fixed height. That way is going to correspond to the frame is going to change sizes when we change the width, but not when we change the height, right? So this one 
these product details need to be set to fill container as well. And now this is what we get. Now the photo that's gonna be 375 pixels. So I'm gonna be setting that to 390 just to have some headspace and also increase the height of this to about 360. With the product details, there's gonna be a padding on the bottom that's gonna be around 40 pixels. And from the sides, we're gonna go for like 30, yeah, something like that, just to make it look nice and all. Moving things to the very edge of their container, I you can see that it's it looks very cluttered. It doesn't look easy to use and a bit chaotic, so that's why I recommend when designing interfaces to really pay, atten pay attention to paddings and distances from you know edges. Leaving some room for to let your objects breathe is always better than doing the opposite. We're gonna add rounded corners to this object. So I'm gonna select product and then go here to set rounding. We, you can't see anything and that's because this checkbox is unchecked. We wanna enable that so now you can see that it's being rounded. Let's go for like 25, 24, something like that, right? Um, you can kind of see where we are going with this. This is gonna live on the screen. So when you open a product detail, you need to think about what items should be shown there. Like you need to have some controls, right? You wanna make, you wanna enable the user to, for example, close the detail. And to be specific, we're gonna add a, an X button, like a close button in the top right corner, right here, to show that there is indeed such an option to do, to do that. All right, so we're gonna use the pen tool, then I'm gonna uh, set the width and the height of this to 24. I'm gonna duplicate, flip it. We will probably go for like two pixels, group, group that and set the width and height to whatever feels right, right? So this is gonna be contained within an auto layout again. Uh, we'll, we'll have to group it again and then add the auto layout, right? So this is gonna be called the close button, close button. And we're gonna add some paddings. We're gonna round this. We're gonna add a background. It's gonna be partially transparent. So this is our close button. Now we just need to place that right here but how do we do that? I'm gonna select the close button, cut it, press Command X, and then paste it within the product auto layout. Then I'm gonna enable absolute position for this and align that to the top right corner like this. I'm gonna also set, make sure the constraints are set to right and top, and then just add a little bit of spacing again, right? So this is what we get. At this moment, we are ready to turn this into a component, which we'll, we're gonna do by selecting the, selecting the auto layout and going here to create a new component. This component is not surprisingly called product. And we're gonna click this icon right here to create another variant. Now we have two variants. We have a property called property one, but we want to name this property state. And these individual variants, we're gonna wanna call that collapse and expand it. And this collapsed state, I'm gonna select that and then go to product details and turn that the layer visibility off as well as the close button. And then I'm gonna be resizing this to 157 pixels both width and height. So now we get this, but we want this camera to be visible. So we're, go we're gonna have to play around with the, with the position of the image frame and the image, which means resizing this image frame to about this size and then scaling the, the actual camera image to fit inside this square like this. So now we get a component called product with two states, collapsed and expanded. Now we need to create two screens. One is gonna be for all the products. So that's this screen is gonna be called list of products, let's say. And here it's gonna be called product, product preview. And what we wanna do now is create a bunch of squares that's gonna, that are gonna be 157 pixels with the same rounding as this uh, state, this, this variant, though so that means 25, and just multiplying them, copying them a few times, and then selecting them and setting this spacing to whichever value is gonna look the best. I think we can go for 20. Maybe we, we wanna go for like 12, and centering this against the frame. Except that one of them, one of those, that's gonna be our product 
component. So we're gonna put it right here. And these, all of these are just basically like placeholders. So you can imagine like here being uh, different cameras or other goods, right? Whichever is gonna be necessary for uh, that specific purpose. I'm gonna duplicate the headline, make it larger like 40 and just say products. So as you can see, this is gonna be our list of products. And also I'm gonna enable vertical scrolling. This should be right. So this, so you, we get a basic screen with this uh, component and you can kind of scroll through uh, a very limited number of uh, products, but uh, the scrolling function is there. So next on the list, gonna be actually creating the animation where this expands all over the screen and where you can actually click add to cart. So, we have to duplicate all of these elements. So I'm gonna select this, press copy and paste. And I'm gonna select this product and go here to set that to expand it. I'm gonna center that against the screen. And then I'm gonna be also adding a rectangle that's gonna be the exact same size as the frame. So that's 375 by 812. This one's gonna be black with reduced opacity and it's gonna be behind, gonna be centered and behind the product to create an overlay like this. So these are the two screens we have. We have this one where you can scroll through and then we get this. Question is, how do we enable a, an animated transition between these two? That would be by going to prototype, then selecting this component, this instance, and clicking and dragging like this to connect that to the second frame. This is gonna say on tap, navigate to product preview, and it's gonna be smart animate, ease out 300 milliseconds. And to also enable the closing feature, we're gonna select the close button and then click and drag over here. This one is gonna be on tap and then back. So what should theoretically happen now is when we launch the prototype and we click this camera right here, this should expand in an animated way to cover up the whole screen and the screen behind that should also get darker. So that's what theoretically should happen. Let's test this out. We have a product overview, a list of products, then we click on this and that's exactly what, what's happened. Now we can click this close button and it reverts back the previous frame. So thanks to enabling smart animation, we get this transition that looks very dynamic. We could also, I think, make one slight improvement and that is removing the overlay, just, just the overlay and enabling a shadow for our product detail. Let's go for like blur 100, distance 40 and big opacity. So you get this, you get this shadow right here and I think that looks better. You could also speed up the animation to be like 150. So this would be 150, same here, and it should now happen faster. But we also want to be able to click on this button, add to cart, and we want to get some kind of reaction. So the idea here is to create a, another state of this button that will show a check mark and the whole button is gonna turn green, just to show that this item has indeed been added to a cart. Let's, let's do that. I'm gonna copy this button outside this component and then turn that into a component as well. This component is gonna have another state and this state is gonna be called added, whereas the first one is gonna be called default and the background color of this added button that's gonna be green like this. We're also gonna change the text to say add it to cart and we're gonna draw a small check mark like this that will be white or pixels and we're gonna paste that inside this button. We're gonna also paste that inside of this button and then we're gonna select these text layers and set width to hack contents and make sure it's being centered in both cases. We're gonna add like 10 in terms of spacing between items and to hide the check mark in this state, right? Also, we're gonna go to prototype and then select the first state and click and drag over here to say on tap, change to property one added. This is also gonna smart animate. And now one final last thing, I'm gonna create an instance of this component, copy that and paste it inside this auto layout called product details and remove the first button that is not an actual instance of a component, right? So this is an instance of a component. This is not, this is just a regular uh, auto layout. 
and I'm going to remove the regular one and keep the um, component instance. So we should be able to now click on this and it should turn green like this. Let's test this out. We're on products. We, uh, we see a preview of all the products. We click on one, it expands and then we click add to cart and it's being added to cart. You could also do an interaction where um, just to be able to revert this back to say that I'm, I'm, if I click this variant, so on tab change to property one default. You're gonna be able to keep adding and removing this to your cart, to and from your cart. And also I believe this interaction should be faster like 80 milliseconds here and 80 milliseconds here so that this maybe even we wouldn't go for uh, instant right so there's going to be no animation this is just going to be instant so that we can do this type of thing perfect so this is our very basic user flow you can navigate through um, you can show a product screen and you can click on one read the item name and the description. You can add that to your cart. You can close the window and maybe you wanna return back to that item again and remove that from your cart and then just close it again and move on. So this is it. This is how you create a very simple user journey through a fictional mobile app. If you, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more similar content like this, more user flows, leave a like and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.